number plus social security number. So sometimes you can have one, sometimes two, sometimes three keys in your relation. So at least one. So first key constraint is each relation should have at least one key. Okay? So that is the key of R. And for example, car, it has serial number. Also, you can have registration number. It has two keys. Then, this is the key point. How many presidents does the United States have? One. We don't want two presidents. We don't want two kings. We don't want two chairmen in any group. <coughs> Only one. <coughs> Similarly, if we allow the multiple keys for relation, it will be confusing. The data, the computer may not know which key they need to use. Human being can do it. Human being. If I ask, why don't you find the summon? Then you can use sometimes UBI. Sometimes you can use even name. You can use something, other information, but computer does not. You need to specify. Among key, you have the several key, and which one is the primary one? That is the reason it's called the primary key. <coughs> you need to select one of them as the primary key. Now you understand. Probably everybody heard about primary key. Primary key is a key. Of, so this is the way of definition how to define the primary key. Primary key among keys. Each relation may have several keys, key one, key two, key three, then you can use one of them as a primary key. So how many primary keys for each relation? Mm. Only one. Mm -hmm. Primary key is the only one key. Okay? It's name in print, primary key. How many keys? It can be many, but among keys, you need to select one of them as a primary key. What about the others? The other keys is also very important to access the data. It's almost the same as the primary key, but it's not selected as a primary key. So this is called secondary key. Secondary key is also very, very fastest fast way to access the data. The only difference is it's not selected as the primary key to represent relation. So you should keep such a secondary key information in your database. Also very important to access the data. Both, all of them should be unique. Okay. Then, do you have any question when I define primary key and secondary keys. No? I have to know. How? How to select the primary key? <laughs> Professor Lee does not mention about it. Any idea how to select the primary key? Both like the presidential <coughs> campaign? <coughs> or uh, randomly choose? Something common. Something common? Between the keys. The list of keys. Any other? Consider, Consider uh, maybe future. Future. ID you can mm -hmm. always identify. Quite similar. 80 out of 100. Unique. It depends on what? Unique attribute. All of them are unique. Meaning of your database. For example, social security number and UBI. We have two keys. We need to select one of them as the primary key. This is for student yeah. database. Which one? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely UBI. How do you select this one? Because the meaning of this database is for student. So we better find a student related key. But if, but if this is a payroll employee, 
The affinity association is related to text, right? That's the way how to select the primary. So there is no general answer. But it's your job as a design. When you design, when you model database, you need to select one of them as the primary key that actually relates <coughs> to your database. Okay? So that is a primary. Then we can use underline for only primary key, not all the key, only primary key. That key actually different from the key in ER modeling. Key in ER modeling, sometimes you don't have key for entity. Sometimes it has partial key. Sometimes it has multiple key. Okay? Quite similar but not exactly the same. Okay? Relational database model is more strict. So it should have, each relation should must have the primary, primary one primary key then underline. The other secondary key is called also candidate key. They are almost the same, they are candidate. It can be selected as a primary key, but not selected because of the limitation of the number of a primary key. So it's called a secondary key or candidate key. So, in this example, car relation. Okay? What is the primary key? <coughs> License number is a primary key of car. So we can underline. This car attribute. The engine setup also is unique. The engine. Yeah, this is a unique. The engine serial. Also. Yes, it can be unique. If that is unique, then that is the candidate or secondary key. So, uh, here our focus is on the owner of the yeah. of yes, car. Right. But if this car relation is for the manufacturer database, then you will focus on any. But this is for sales or the DMV. DMV likes to know the license number rather than engine number. And the number is also very important <coughs> when you, uh, for example, when you purchase your car, so you need to check whether your car was flooded. If your car is flooded, your engine was replaced, right? It may have the different number. Each engine has the unique number. But depending on the purpose of your database, you can select that. this one as a primary key, this one as a primary key. So, Really in let's see that one later. The next one is entity intuitive. So we discuss about the first rule, first policy, first constraint. That is primary key. Primary key is key constraint means unique. But here is it possible this is a null data and something data and something <coughs> data over here. The definition of key actually does not mention about none. So, do you think this is a unique or not? No. No. Can not you like compare? Here. No, you cannot compare. It doesn't exist. <coughs> So you don't have to worry about this one. This is still unique. There's another null. Is this unique or not? Still unique because null you cannot compare. So uniqueness is among the data, existing data. So null you cannot compare, you cannot consider, even though there are a lot of null in visual. Right? But I want to get this record. But do we have the null values in the key attribute? Yes. According to the definition of key, yes, it's possible. But sometimes I want to get this tuple. I want to get this tuple. No way. Because null you cannot compare the invisible. Right? So the second constraint is the integrity Ent entity integrity. Entity integrity does not allow null value for key. 
actually. So should must have something value like a five, six. That is a reason. Most of the DBMS, the manual book, who are something Googling or textbook, you heard about. Primary key should be unique plus none. None. That was the reason. <coughs> Second constraint is it doesn't allow key, does not allow not null data. Because if we null, you cannot find, you cannot search the data. So primary key means from now on, unique plus not null. So when you, in other words, when you create the table with the primary key, automatically check uniqueness as well as null or none. Uniqueness does not consider null or none. It will consider only the this one. So that is the reason we need to add one more constraint. The last constraint is the most important one in relation and model. We have student. We have department. The student relation has the UMI ID. It's a key. Okay. <coughs> Primary key. Even. So one, two, three. And last name, first name, and major, and the GPA, and department where you belong. Okay, then the so last name is Lee and Jane. Last name is Smith. And last name is Potter. And first name is J H I and major C C S B S C S and Master C S and PhD C S GP 1.0 2.0 3.0 and department computer science, department electrical engineering and education. Then department. Department, the ID. One, two, department name is the CSEE -E and name and location. So tech building and then. So I create the two, there might be no problem according <coughs> to the definition of relation and according to the part key constraint. Key constraint, unit, and none. So there might be no problem. Right? When you create. Any problem? No. But I'd like to access data of my each student last name plus location of their department. So like this way, Lee is in tech building. And the Smith is in the Banner Hall. Something like that. What about the Patel? Hatha where is? No. no. Education, we cannot find. So this data is not integrated. There is something missing, communication. There are missing communication. Not communication, missing information. Okay? So we need to, because we define a group of data, group of the student as a one relation, one table, one unit, and group of department as a one unit. But they should be correlated. However, this is not related. How can you address the problem? The data in department should exist in department table, right? You need to specify that rule, that constraint, that concept, that policy. Okay? So, for example, here department should be, what about the name or department ID? Which one is better? <coughs> Definitely ID. Who knows? We have the same department name. 
ID definitely is the primary to underline. So it's a unique, it's a non-null, should exist in the database. So we are going to chain one, two, E doesn't exist. So you cannot insert, you cannot populate this. Why you need to have something E, this is the data. Like we can use no. We can use no. No data? Yeah. <coughs> yes, this is one of the possibilities. It doesn't exist. But depending on the your database, you may not allow such a null for this constraint. Yeah, there will be no connection. Yes. You have the something losing information about this one. It's not the consistent. So in terms of consistent. So the third rule, third constraint is this one should exist this one. So this is called referential integrity. Referential integrity means between two tables, two relations. So one of the data values <coughs> should exist the other. This is called referencing. Referencing relation. This one is referenced relation. So referencing relation, the value in referencing relation should exist referenced table. That should be primary. Okay? Then we may not lose such a information. This is called referential integrity. What you probably know that this name foreign key constraint. So this is very important constraint in relational database model that differentiates from other database model. Other database model does not have such a thing. Instead, it have one centralized or something this way. Okay? Then, when you access the data, so you can use the foreign <coughs> key constraint <coughs> to access the data. That operation will be used, will be called join operation later. Okay? Is there anyone who may be curious? What if combine student yeah. and department? Then why we do not combine instead very complete? Actually, join operation is very, very expensive. What does that mean, expensive in computer? It takes time. It takes a time, it requires more research in memory. Yeah. Why do we use, instead, why don't we combine student and table? Yeah, why don't we combine student yeah. plus right, this department, this is a student under my department table. Sometimes we have to change the name. It's so easy for us to change mm -hmm. small table or not. So let's, can you understand what he is saying first? It's easier to deal with. Why don't you explain again? If we have to change the name of the department, it's easy for us to change. The so let's think about we have in this case, we need three students. Let's think about the 10,000 students. Okay? Then has three departments. So, department, so we have a bunch of the students, 10,000 students. We put this information here. <coughs> one, 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 how many one? 3,000 students. And 4,000 students, EE. E. And the other 3,000 students, Education. When you change it, as he said, we when computer science moved to <coughs> other building, you need to change how many data? Mm -hmm. Three thousand okay. uh, the record. Waste of time, wait even waste of space. Can you remember? 
why don't we go back to the beginning of this class? Dr. When Dr. Yin could propose this new database model, it's a very large database comparing to computing power. He want to save the storage. If we allow to combine, waste of storage. At the time, it was very, very expensive. Also, it's very hard to manage. If somebody move, you need to change all the data. What if there are <coughs> students who are not in the, any department, it's a general subject sometimes. So it's not. So because of that, actually he start his idea from such a separation, which is called the later normalization. Anyone heard about normalization? It's a very important thing in relational model. Only in relational model. Normalization means separation, actually. Segmentation. So piece by piece by piece. Then you can connect them using foreign constraint or referential integrity. So referential integrity is from referencing relation to effort. Leffert, Leffert relation should be primary. Otherwise, you cannot find what is one, <laughs> what is two. It should be unique. Okay, that is called the referential intuitive or boring. Some other method for the first one is a check constraint. Check constraint is I define the salary attribute for employee. We have the salary attribute. A salary, minimum salary is 10,000. And maximum salary is 100,000. That is our rule, our company rule. So can you specify such a limitation? using the existing constraint, no. So we are going to consider such a check, check each attribute. And another one is, we want something, GPA is very important. GPA should not be updated. However, in case GPA is updated, should inform to other or change something. <coughs> At the time, it's kind of a ECA, event, condition, action. Anyone who heard about the ECA rule? So ECA is simple, if then else. So event, in case something happens, in case the GPS changes, check condition whether this action is approved. If, yeah, if not, then do something, warning or well, that <coughs> is in, implemented by the assertion. Why is called the trigger? So we will learn the trigger details later. So this is the possible output of company relational database schema. So it has the relation with the primary key, relation primary key. But we still miss what? Foreign key, referential integrity. Okay? How can you represent the represent rep using this way? Okay, so go back to Can you find any referential integrity from here? What foreign key? First, E M should exist here. So referencing is the study, and reference is the arrow, head of the arrow. Let me this way you can do it. And any other? Department number and department and department location. Department number in the location should give this D number. Any other?
department name. Department name in what? In department. In department. Where? This one? Dependent. Dependent. It's a dependent. Oh, okay. It's a department. No, no relation. Anything else? Yes. Employer. Employer. Which attribute? Uh, social security. Social security number? Yeah. yeah. What yeah, yeah, yeah. Dependent. It doesn't have. Yes. ESSN. ESSN. Which one is a study? This one or this one? From here to here or here to here? I'm this one should be this. Yeah. Always the target reference one should be primary. Underline. Anything else? <coughs> work on. Work, work. work on. ESSN. <coughs> D number in project. This one or this one? Department. That's it? No. Piano in work zone. P number in project. Right. Anything else? One more. Manager social security number. Should it exist in improve? Manager is also That's it? <coughs> Actually, there is one more. Department name. Department. Department name in where? Where? This one? No. Super SSN. Super It's also employee, right? Should it exist where? SSN. That's it. So it has the company database. Even though we have one, two, three, four, five, six relate uh, six relation, six table, but it has a lot of for it keep constraint to keep the consistency of the data. Okay? I know this is not easy to find identify this one right now, but if you start <coughs> your modeling from ER modeling, then this one you can eventually find for it. Who is it today? First day. Where's the first date? This one? First one. First one. So whose first date is this? Dependent. Dependent. Your son. Whose first date is this? It's yours. That's the improve. So it's different. So even though column name, attribute name are same, that doesn't mean there should be foreign key or reference key. But you should consider cement meaning of the attribute. So this is the last of the output. Okay. Then if you if we add a data, it's a population that is a database state, company database schema with the date. It's a company. So your goal is to create such a database schema, including all the constraint and the data, sample data. This should be the output of your page three. And in page four, you are going to implement a program to access this data. That's the database program, database system. Yes. Uh, you said we can't use node like this in the bottom. Uh -huh. But uh, in uh, super. Oh, yes. So depending on depending on the date, DBMS, this one allow such a null data. So 
usually no you cannot compare so you don't have to worry about it. <coughs> so null can be but some of the DBMS does not allow the null data for this so in this class we are going to allow such a null data for referencing column okay it doesn't have to be <coughs> unique this one can be duplicate data mm -hmm. student there are many students in the same department, but this one should be unique and unknown. 